In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect an external video output device from Blackmagic to a Mac Mini M1. Many of you are aware at this point that Mac Mini M1s have a lot of great qualities, but one of them is not the amount of displays they support. For some reason that I don't understand and really doesn't matter, they only let you support two external displays at once. Since one of them is already the main display you're looking at, if you wanna have multiple outputs from ProPresenter 7, which if you're watching this, you do for streaming and for obviously the front of house, you've gotta find another solution. External video output devices allow you to get around this by using a Thunderbolt cable to something with essentially its own GPU type brain. This lets the Mac offload the computing power to support that display to this external device, like either the Blackmagic Monitor 3G or the Blackmagic DeckLink Duo 2 if you need more than one additional output. Getting the software installed correctly and then getting the device connected and operational can be a little bit tricky. So in the following video, I'm gonna show you a screen share of me doing it at a church nearby. So this video is gonna show you very simply, step-by-step -step, how to connect your Blackmagic external video device to your Mac Mini M1. So let's jump in. First thing we need to do if we're going to connect an external Blackmagic uh, output device like the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G that I'm using today, or even something like a DeckLink Duo, uh, anything that's a Thunderbolt connection um, that's going to give you a video output as opposed to a display um, so that we can get around the M1's limitations on external displays is going to follow the same process. So the first thing we have to do is download desktop video installer from blackmagic.com. If you're not sure where to find desktop video uh, online, what you want to do is go to blackmagicdesign.com and then click support. That will take you to this page and it'll say, how can we help you? You can do it two ways. You can either just scroll or you can kind of shortcut it and say, well, I go to capture and playback and it's going to show you desktop video whatever the most recent release is. So it'll show 12.2.1, 12.2.2, 12.2, whatever. Um, so the most recent one is 12.2.2. Depending on when you watch this, it'll probably be a new version released. But what you wanna do here is just download the appropriate uh, you know, version for your operating system. We're on a Mac, obviously this is a Mac M1 video. So if you want to fill out the details here as far as name, company, email, so you can register it, you can do that here or you can actually just go to download only if you've either done this already or just don't wanna deal with it. Now that you've got it downloaded, you're gonna to wanna to open up desktop video setup and that's gonna bring up this window here. It's gonna have a couple of different things for you. So what you wanna do is go to install desktop video 12.2.2. So we're going to say, yep. So we're gonna see this message pretty much every time on an M1. It's gonna say, this is on the disk image, blah, 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 and your security preferences don't let you use this software. And then it's gonna shut down. So instead of panicking, what we need to do is go to system preferences and go to security and privacy. What we're gonna do here um, is use your authentication key, AKA password, to let yourself in. And then we're gonna say app store and identify developers and then we're gonna go open anyway because all Blackmagic products for whatever reason are not identified developers. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. So we're gonna say open anyways and look, now we can use it. So we're gonna go continue, 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 blah, 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 agree and just get this over with. Again, password. All right, and then we are going to see this again, system extension block. So we're gonna open security preferences and we're gonna say, we need to allow the, the driver extension from loading. So we're gonna say allow, okay? So let's try it again. And then we need to restart the Mac. So let's do that real quick. Now that it's booted back up, I wanna open it and I don't see it anywhere. So we're actually gonna get rid of this. Um, what you want to do, command spacebar is a nice shortcut on Mac if you aren't familiar, and I'm going to type in desktop video, and you're going to see desktop video setup right here. And I'm going to drag this over so that we no longer have to go looking for it every time uh, we set this up. 
So I have not connected my device yet, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And just like that, the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G is there. So I have successfully gone through and bypassed the Mac M1's controls and restrictions on using this third-party software. You used to have to go to a safe boot mode to change those. I think uh, one or the other has made life easier. I'm not sure who changed what, but thankfully we're here now and this is much easier. So what I'm gonna do now to actually get this to work with my switcher is open up the preferences and change my video output. So I wanna output 2997 at 1080p because that's what my switcher default is. I know some of you uh, are using different standards, that's totally fine, whatever works for you. Um, just make sure that this standard matches what your switcher is looking for. It won't change the actual display of your Mac, which is why getting devices like this is great. Otherwise, if you just use an HDMI output dongle, you actually have to change the output resolution for the Mac itself, which is complicated and resets every time you turn the computer on, which is a pain. So I'm gonna leave everything uh, standard here um, if I go to about, just make sure everything here, yeah, nothing really to see there. So really very simple. If you have a Decklink Duo, you're gonna see a lot more options because you've got four bi-directional inputs and outputs, um, or bi-directional connections, I should say, over SDI. So you're gonna have a lot more stuff to manipulate. Got some other videos on how to set that up, but for this, uh, you're pretty much good to go once you hit save. And all you have to do now is connect your SDI or HDMI cable, whichever you're gonna use here, to your switcher or wherever this is going, and then configure it in ProPresenter and you are off to the races. All right guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. And this is just a taste of all the videos that we've got inside the Live Video Pro course. We've got keynotes and step-by-step -step tutorials like you just saw to help you and or your volunteer team learn everything they need to know to be successful running a live stream on a Sunday. So make sure you check out the Live Video Pro links below as well as the free church video gear guide if you want help finding the right gear for your budget in less time. Thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you.